So what'd you learn? What you looking back at, we'll take a, take a look back at Notre Dame really quick. What'd you learn from that game? Notre Dame. That was a long time ago. It feels like it. Let me, uh, you know, it's, uh, you come out of every game and you always feel like um, there's technical things to, to correct. Um, you always come back and it's a play caller. I wish I would have got this call back. Wish I would have got that call back. Um, I can't think of a game in all the seven years I've been here that I don't feel like that after every game, you know, and, and this is there's no exception in this one. Um, felt like we played a dang good team. Um, credit them. I felt like they executed um, in the situations that we needed to uh, better than we did, and obviously that's, that's why we come away with it. And it's not, the game's not all just defense. There's there's offense, there's special teams, and um, and uh, in trying to win a game, you know. And so we're just trying to play our phase the best that we can. But um, in in the phases that we looked at and just things that we saw, I mean, there's uh, ebbs and flow of the game. There's there's good things, there's bad things, and um, you know, I, I felt like they they played really well. I was I was a really really good team. Um, I, I thought that they were tough, and I thought that our boys battled. You know, it's uh, there wasn't uh, there wasn't any any part of the game all the way until they start to kneel the ball at the end that felt like we had guys that were um, quitting or wasn't trying hard or there was always a belief, belief in the boys and the way that they played all the way to the end that they could win. So. What do you think it's going to take you to, to get off, off the field, get some stops on third down? Uh, execution, you know, execution. It's uh, uh, execution for on, on third down. The third downs was really as we, we came away with it without even looking at the tape. Uh, knew right away that um, that was that was an issue of ours. In order, to, you know, coming off the field, there was um, tried several different things. You know, um, thought about several different things as far as the schemes, maybe things that we could have done differently. But uh, felt like if we would have executed, uh, it would have gave us a, given us a better shot. You know, there's there are a couple of assignment busts, um, and then and then they they made plays. You know, they the the tight end. Uh, did a phenomenal job getting open. The quarterback stood in the pocket and delivered some balls. Where th thought that uh, we got hits on him, um, and he wasn't rattled. He wasn't. He wasn't nervous. He sat in there and he delivered some balls that were uh, really well, you know, th well, well thrown balls. And so, um, you know, credit them for executing. But also, uh, we've just got to do a better job executing on our side as well as uh, a technique and assignment. You know. You guys have faced some really good quarterbacks this season. Uh, how unique of a challenge is Jefferson for Arkansas? Yeah, he's he's uh, he's a little bit of everything that we faced, you know, and and uh, all the quarterbacks that we've seen so far. But he's uh, what what their offense does, uh, what they try to do with the quarterback, and and what he can do. I mean, it's it's a it's a whole different animal, you know, because you've got an All-American running back, you've got a really good O line that's that's well coached as well, and. And then you've got the issue of dealing with a quarterback that can run and throw. And so there's there's a lot of challenges ahead of us this week. Um, we, just like everybody else in the country, is banged up. I know I've watched interviews from Sam Pittman and watched interviews from uh, Kendall Bryles. I, I know that they've got, they're, they're banged up just like we are. And so we've got to put out a, a great product on the field and, and try to try to come up with some stops. When you mentioned okay. I was just going to say on the subject of uh, Jefferson, can you take much from their offense last week against Mississippi State, uh, being that it was run by a different quarterback? No, I mean, it, it, yeah. The, no, it, it, it's it's the same offense. It's the same offense. Um, you know, the, the they, they had their two quarterbacks come in uh, in the last game. Um, one of them was a little bit probably uh, fit fit the mold of the, of the starting quarterback. The other guy was a little, probably, you know, fit the mold of a different one. But it's the same offense. Um, and uh, it, it presents challenges either way. You, you mentioned that, like, like Arkansas, you guys are a little bit banged up too. Uh, any, are any of the guys like uh, Mangelson, Larson, Gagne, uh, Summers, are they season ending or they, is there hope that they can eventually get back? Um, yeah, no, uh, Josh, Larson's, Josh Larson's out. out uh, for the year. For the year. You know, Blake Mangelson will probably be another week or two. And so, don't know if he's going to end up playing this one. Just, you know, we only got, you're coming off, you've got a Monday, you got practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's just, uh, if you're not practicing, you don't, you don't at least show that you can or at least take on. I mean, for a D lineman, it's, it's uh, the, the challenges are different, right? And it's, you can run around fine, you can, you can, you look fine, run around, but can you sit in there and anchor against, you know, 600 pounds of force pushing at you? And uh, I don't know if he's at that, at the place yet where he can do that. So, probably not for him. Um, 
Uh, Gabe Summers is going. I mean, he's he's he tore his PCL, um, and he's just battling. You know, he's he's uh, he's got issues that he's dealing with, but he's it's not anything that he. I mean, it's just really just pain tolerance, and he's a tough kid, and so he's given us given us everything that he's got. Um, and who was the other one you asked? I mean, Gagne probably out for the year. Yeah. Coach, as far as philosophy goes, how? How, do, how have you evolved as far as the high risk, high reward blitz packages, you know, being aggressive on the front end? How, how has that decision making evolved for you as, as you decide when to go? Kalani mentioned that you know you guys brought quite a bit of pressure against Notre Dame. You tried to attack them a little bit. Yeah, uh, um, that 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 uh, the philosophy, the the conversation, it changes every year. I think a lot of it really has to do with uh, uh, who are your players, who you're working with, what are they good at, what are they best at. Um, how much? How much are you willing to sacrifice? In what part of the game, um, you know, are we at? I mean, all, all that all that stuff comes into play. And so, the the pre pressures and all that stuff, we carry pressures every single week. We use them every single week. Um, and some teams, we just we prefer to uh, to play more coverage than we do than we do pressure. We feel like coverage pressure is what we call it, <laughs> is is better than. Uh, than uh, blitzing and leaving your coverage guys out there to dry, and so it just it, it all it all just kind of depends on on what's what's going on at that time with who you've got and who's playing. Since you and Kalani got here, you guys have faced a, a lot of SEC teams. Is there a difference to the level of talent or the personnel that these SEC teams have, or is it a byproduct of the media hype machine for the SEC? Have, have you, do you see a difference when you face these type of squads? Yeah, I mean the ones that we've played, um, we we haven't. I, we played. Uh, I can't even remember who we played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're uh, what you'd expect from a Power Five program. But um, you know, as far as just the the teams that are winning national championships, I mean, they're in the SEC. And so I don't know if there's anything that you can argue when it comes to that because they're playing they're playing all the way to the to the national championship. But there's definitely a, a difference in uh, a player when you're talking about playing Power Five uh, teams. You know, Any, anybody that we play in the Pac-12 as well as um, you know, uh, Big 12. I mean, there's there's definitely a difference. Are these like measuring stick opportunities for the program to show progress heading into the back half of the season? Uh, for sure, and I think it's it's been a great measuring stick for the last six years of independence. You know, I feel like uh, for when we first got here to now, the schedule has gotten harder and harder and harder and harder, and it just um, you know it keeps getting tougher with Power Five programs, and and so yeah, it's I think it's a great measuring stick for us. Um, but it's what you see. What you see in uh, college football today, with uh, anybody beating anybody, it's like you've got to you've got to be on top of it, um, week in week out, regardless of who you're playing, or you could lose. You know. How do you think Talon Alfrey has played with given his opportunity? I thought he's played really, really well. Um, really impressed with his physicality, his um, his willingness to tackle. I mean, uh, I mean, it's taken him some time to kind of understand and catch up with the schemes and all that stuff. But he's making fewer and fewer mistakes. But just, uh, just a tremendous uh, uh, tackler and just what he's what he's brought. I thought um, this last game, I thought he played really, really well. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks, okay, so much. appreciate right, it. Those.